You're welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We're now turning our focus to the national newspapers. We have a couple with us today. And in the studio is legal practitioner Libero Sashoma to help us make sense of them. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yes. Let's begin with the nation, The Punch newspaper. This one says, inbound passengers shun isolation. Enforcement collapses. Our priority on testing, not compulsory self-isolation, says Lagos. Self-isolation enforcement is controlled by NCDC, not states, Kano. And its personal responsibility, FCT, FAN shifts enforcement to NCDC. FG plans concession of Lagos Street Fair, Calibre, Kano SEZs, National Theatre, CBN creates clusters, projects 35,000 jobs. Ohanezi Pandev Afeniferi berates NIS for saying no armed herders. We also have this one here. Uh, there's a picture, a very sad picture here. Uh, Makinde Akiridulu meets Ibada market warring parties, preach peace. And that's, uh, as we can see, basically events from Friday, you know, in Oyo State. Okonjaiwela Mo Ibrahim additional headline uh, as summit opens Tuesday. Senators mobilize support for anti open grazing. Police silence as gunmen kidnap 18 travelers in Niger. Suspected herdsmen strike in Ondo Ogun, kill six farmers. Lagos trader baits apprentice in acid, victim detained for three months. And Naka warns, as report says, Nigerians use 578 million condoms annually. Warns? Oh, okay. I don't know if it's once, you know, how many times. I didn't give that statistics. No, I'm, I'm trying to be sure if it's why they are warning. Uh, oh, warns. Yeah. Oh, the, they, sh they should be preaching this, right? Because there's lots of advantages to, yes, to of this. Course. So well, anyway, anyway we'll, we'll read further into the story. They should encourage Nigerians exactly. to use more. It should be more. It should be, there should be campaigns yeah. Absolutely, for that. should oh. be more. So if you're saying that Nigerians should use condoms, and now we have, you know, 578 million users <laughs> annually. Users. Um, it's it's uh, encouraging, and there shouldn't be a warning. Rather, should be... A pat on know, the back? Yes, <laughs> and it should be encouraged more, because that's the biggest business in mm. the world. I once said it here that the budget for, for sex annually is much more than that of you know the national budget in Nigeria. So, but let's I don't want to dwell on that. Yes. Uh, it's a topic on its own. I'm altogether. glad we started on the lighter notes. So let's now go into like the big business of today, Ms. Ashama. Yeah, uh, inbound passengers shown isolation and, uh, and enforcement collapses. You know, it's also every day you pick up the newspaper as you're trying to look for cherry news, you know, to be proud about your country. But just, just, you know, all the negatives just keep pumping in your face. And then some people say, no, uh, uh, newspapers intentionally highlight the negatives. When there are no positives to publish, when everywhere you look, it's either, you know, government officials are not doing it right, the people also are not, you know, um, doing it well. Um, and everything is just in total collapse. In other countries, enforcement, they tell you, you must isolate. And because they have data, they monitor. Enforcement, there is no law without monitoring and enforcement. Without enforcement, the laws are just mere paper tiger. And so, what makes the law the law? It is the enforcement of it. And that's what, in some cases, deter some persons. But here, when you can't enforce, even it is so bad now that uh, in some countries, our COVID test results are rejected. In Dubai, you know, that Emirates, Emirates Airline, I'll call the name, for, for, for the next two weeks had said they would not carry outbound Nigerian passengers. And so your COVID test results are fake. You can't enforce... Uh, um, uh, isolation. The uh, states and the federal government are singing discounted tunes. At the end of the day, how do you now want your people to believe that truly 
you know what you're doing in as far as COVID is concerned. Mr. Shoma, I want to draw something to your attention. I've spoken to a couple of people who newly arrived in Nigeria from, you know, other parts of the country and other parts of the world. And they mentioned that even on Twitter, the story is the same. When you're coming in, you're required to pay for the COVID test. You must pay for it, 50400 Yeah. But then it seems that that's where all the focus and attention is. Once you pay for the COVID test, that's it. Yeah. Nobody cares about so whether you're isolating. It's, it's about it's the just... money. It's about the money. And that's why you have, you know, uh, at the end of the day, you have fake COVID tests everywhere, including right there at the airports. The officials are also involved in the racket. So if government is charging 50000 the um, touts will charge 25,000, you know, for the test. And the most important thing is you want to travel, you just need a piece of paper. Uh, you know, so it's, it's um, all of these boils down to lack of, you know, focus and enforcement. And then secondly, Maki de Akuro de Lumiti Market, Warring Parties, Bridge Peace. If care is not taken, we are sitting on a time bomb. You know, because when you begin to compensate criminality, what you're telling those that have the capacity to carry guns and, but are not yet carrying guns is that it pays. Criminality pays. We started this long ago. During Gulag Jonathan's time, we compensated, uh, from Yaradwa, compensated um, amnesty, you know, militancy, Militant, yes. because government wanted to consistently, you know, drill oil on their soil. So give them amnesty. And so it became an all commerce affair. Just the same way we're talking about COVID uh, test and, and enforcement now. There were no da data to even know who you know, was a genuine freedom fighter and who was a kidnapper or armed robbery. But today, did that stop kidnapping? No. Rather, it encouraged more people. When Buhari came on board, some cattle rearers became emboldened. They said, oh, no, 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 don't call them full and cattle headers. You know, they are... Um, criminals, label them by their name, you know, don't let us not um, uh, ethnicize violence. And then, well, because, you know, government will consistently look the other way, you know, at some point we're even denying they are not Nigerians, they are Malians, they are Chadians, you know, and these same people you say are not Nigerians, you try to create, you know, grazing reserve for them. And then what that did was to further embolden, you know, other people to say now what it takes to commit crime. Just, you know, look for this, this tribe, this tribe, they are untouchable. You know, once you can pretend to be amongst them or from them, you know, rather than look out for the criminal element among those people and deal with them decisively, we didn't do that. And gradually, the Fulani extraction started becoming an endangered species. But, but the, 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 here's an angle I want you to also address. The, the crisis in Oyo um, isn't necessarily about the headers and you know, farmers. It's, it's, it's about you know, to, an altercation in the market led to the death of one person. There was reprisal that's attacks. What that's why I'm telling you that gradually a tribe became an endangered species. And so once you are seen from that part of the country, it's like, oh yes, you people are those ones for making trouble. And Remember, in, um, in Wari, those days, what led to the Ishekiri Ijo. Ijo fight was the fact that, oh, yes, these people who were peaceful people all of a sudden became emboldened. And so, and before you knew it, a fight that would start with just two persons would engulf an entire community. What government should do is to immediately, irrespective of the tribe, fish out those involved. Imagine. Um, the immigration service saying that headers don't carry arms, despite the abundance of evidence, you know, that the, even some persons had come out to say, we arm them because their cattle are being rustled, you know, and then these people that you are arming because their cattle are being rustled, do you also take steps to find out what they do with the yeah. guns that you give them? Kai AK-47, where are the guns coming from? Who, is, who are you buying them from to arm cattle uh, rarer? So these are all of the challenges. And so now what you have is everybody thinks, look, we need to defend our territory. If we be it in a market, be it in a village, we need to arm ourselves and defend our territory. That's why you find, you know, the likes of um, Sunday Boho all, all, all of a sudden becoming a hero oh. because of lack of failure of, of governance. Okay. And if care is not taken, this is just a tip of the iceberg.
Mm. Right, let's go, like, go to the uh, Nation newspapers this morning and see what we can quickly find over there. I'm seeing that there are similar stories. Uh, tariff cut on commercial vehicles uh, begins. Uh, policy to boost sector. Also, about a market crisis, traders count losses, victims to get relief. Also, Nigerian stocks lose 666, uh, 63 billion naira amid global rally. Uh, we also can find here the big one there, Buhari, the president, saying we won't tolerate ethnic and religious violence. CBN sets 15 months for 21.3 billion naira national theater remodeling. And um, also, Makinde can't claim to be my leader, says uh, Ayo Fayoshi. Gunmen abduct 21 bus passengers. And also on the nation, Imo Secretary uh, says uh, uh, Secretary General backs um, Nimasa Marine Litter Action Plan. Uh, I'm not sure what that is about. And um, I think these are the big ones. Um, I'm, I'm going to start with the statement from President Mohamed Buhari. Yeah, um, there have been some people criticizing his approach and body language over time. And it's still the same questions that have been asked. Where is the president at a time when the country seems to be going even further apart uh, along ethnic divides? These are, these are statements from the presidency. Uh, so I don't take statements like this serious. Um, Buhari, you know, over time consistently had vowed to tackle insecurity. Has uh, at some point issued statements like this. There are statements from media aides. The president won't, said he won't tolerate this. You know, when you match your action with words, that's when people take you seriously. Not, I won't tolerate this. And then um, the day you visit that place, you say, oh, um, try and live peacefully with your neighbor. That is if you even visit, you know? So that's why people, some people have said the country is too big to run from one spot. Why don't we find a way of decentralizing power so that people at the smaller, lower unit would have, you know, a security enforcement power to be able to curb issues like this immediately rather than having to wait for a central police or a central army, you know, to come queer um, uprising. And then if the president is silent, you know, that means the entire country will be silent. A situation where the police will have to look at the body language, the Nigerian Immigration Service will have to look at the body language of the president, you know, won't lead us anywhere. And so for me, it is not enough to say you will not tolerate. Start from your tribe. And then... Once you do that, it's like a, a principal whose son is a leader of a court group in the school. And the principal says, no, I know this is not the way I raised you. I will start from you. I will discipline you right at the assembly ground. And then I will expel you from this school. When once others hear that the principal has given example with his son, they will run. But here, when you have a situation where when it you know, has to do with the president's tribe, you know, the silence, and then everybody you know, will try to find a way to rationalize it. And mind you, we're not talking about the entire Fulanese. I have a lot of friends who are Fulanese and fantastic people. We're talking about the criminal elements amongst them. We're talking about the criminal elements among the Yorubas. We're talking about the criminal elements among the Igbos, among the Esako, among the Edos, among the Ishan. Every criminal, we should not... We shouldn't try to rationalize it. He's a criminal, he's a criminal, and should be dealt with. But a situation where you're not trying to rationalize it because it's from my side. And so if I say you are a, a, this Fulani headsman, even the Sultan of Sokoto has admitted out of 10 you know, headsmen that are creating crisis, seven are Fulanis. Okay. So that is a big statement. Then quickly, um, sorry, tariff court on commercial vehicles begins. Fantastic, laudable. But what's our long term plan on ensuring you know, that you encourage that sector? What's our, these are short term plans. You cut tariff, but you keep important. So, are we encouraging local production, local, even assembling plants here? You know, fantastic. We launch electric cars, but the price, you know, it's affordable. It is not. And even as we speak now, we are still complaining about electricity and electricity is a supply and electricity is a tariff. Okay. So we should have not just short term, 
plans. We should have short-term, medium-term and long-term plans. Let's uh, quickly turn to the Daily Independent in just a few minutes. This one says, at 11 trillion naira, deficit monetization fuels inflation, weakens naira. Governors mount pressure on Buhari to address Nigerians. FG begins consultation over rising tension. Government, blame government for allowing herdsmen mayhem to escalate. That's Gumi. Akira Dilumakinde visit Shasha Market Sue for Peace. Uh, this one says, alleged loop-sided allocation of constituency projects fund tears reps apart. Stakeholders doubt FG sincerity on auto policy implementation, say 2.5 trillion era auto investment at risk. Um, do you want to quickly talk about this uh, deficit monetization or the pressure on uh, the presidents to address Nigerians? The question you should ask yourself is, do you need to pressure the president to address Nigerians? You know, at the, t at the end of the day, when you pressure him to address the nation, um, you know, it's a um, statement or address will not be inspiring, you know, because it's not coming from him. If he sees the need to, to address the nation, or if, you know, uh, the uprising or the insecurity in the country is not enough, you know, to to force him to address the nation and take decisive action, then leave him. You don't need to pressure him to address. After all, his spokesperson has said that uh, if he responds to every issue, that will make him a talkative. You know, so you don't need to put pressure on him to say address the nation. And mind you, Gumi that had been going around, even asking for amnesty for you know bandit, is even saying that it is government. Uh, 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 lack of uh, decisive action that, you know, is causing all of this mayhem. And so yet, we are begging, we have to beg the president to even talk to us. So if you're begging him to talk, that means we will need more effort to beg him to even take decisions to do something decisively. Um, it, uh, at 11 trillion deficit monetization, fair inflation and weakens Naira. And you, you see, the problem is we do not produce nothing only pure water. So when you, you consistently import, you consider the, the, the pressure on your currency would go down. And so your currency will solely consistently be dependent on you know, the, the, the currency at the international market. And so that's why when you talk about balance of trade most times, balance of trade is you import, your, your export and your imports at least will meet at equilibrium. But when that is not happening, and you find yourself, you know, at this, you know, low ebb, and so sometimes I sit down and I hear government saying they will take every step to show up the naira, and I ask yourself, ask myself, how, where, you know, where, what's what's effort? We are we are renovating national theatre now with um, twenty one billion, twenty one billion, and I can tell you almost everything that they will use. If half of the money will go into private pockets to buy properties. For, that, for stakeholders, and then almost everything they will use to renovate will be imported, mm. including iron, <clears throat> including iron. Meanwhile, you have a Jakuta steel, you have a larger steel, and yet, okay. you know, so when, with all of this, how do you think you, you'll be able to at least shop your, your Naira will not be weak? All Important right. questions there. Thank you very much, Libra Sashama, for your time and thoughts for Off the Press this morning. We will now take a break and return to give you updates on what happened this day in history.